I'm Sarah Lehman, Professor of Modern Languages and Literatures and Associate Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences of Fordham University. Today I will serve as presider over the GSAS presentation of diplomas. Therefore, on this 20th day of May, on this rainy 20th day of May, in the year of our Lord 2023, it is my great pleasure to declare this ceremony officially in session. On behalf of the Dean and the faculty, as well as the entire Fordham community, I welcome you, degree recipients, family members, friends, faculty, honored guests, and current students to this special celebration. And it is a celebratory day, right? Even though the weather is like this? In many days, though, it's been, in many ways, though, it's been a serious day, right? It's like a serious day of transitions and farewells. We heard President Tetlow mention how Fordham students are going to go out into the world and address problems that exist in the world. We heard, we listened to Stevie Wonder talk about uh, equality and diversity and the work that still has to be done in those areas in, to, in order to achieve these goals, right? Today you will also say goodbye to your professors, advisors, program peers, and this beautiful campus if you haven't already. All of this is pretty serious stuff, but I say enough seriousness. Just for a minute, let's take a break just for a few moments. Can we just admit that there's also a little ridiculousness to what we're doing all out here today in this rain? <laughs> and even just some of the circumstance, right? I mean, I stood there for six or eight minutes holding this verge menacingly. No, friendly, in a friendly way. Well, you all walked up, um, and you probably were not sure why I was standing there holding that verge. Oh, and did you know that it's called a verge? Yeah, so here at Fordham, it's called a verge. Nobody knows what that is. So I looked it up, and it turns out it comes from the old French, so some of you folks probably do know what that means. It is a twig. It comes from the old French for a twig of office. That seems appropriate somehow, I'm not sure. Um, and in today's ceremony, I'm called the verge, or I'm called the verger, which essentially erases my identity from anything other than the bearer of the twig. So that's what I've been doing. Now this verge has, I'll turn it around. I'll turn it around. This verge has the image of a ram's head on it, just as one would expect at Fordham, but it's no typical Fordham ram. It has no look of determination like the sporting rams on our t-shirts. It has no innocent smile like the baby rams on the onesies and the bibs that they sell at the bookstore, right? This ram is old and wise with a curly beard and a mustache that extends left and right like the winds. This is a ram who's exhausted from writing his dissertation. So enough about me and The Verge. Do I have to talk about all of you and what you're wearing and under plastic bags and trash bags and things like that, trying to stay dry under umbrellas in the pouring rain? But here we are, right? And those of you who have been hooded already, your hoods are probably choking you like mine is. Um, and your, your hats, everybody's gonna leave here with about the worst hat head of their life, not to mention rain hair, right? But everyone is going to leave here with their degree. So it will no longer matter whether I've mispronounced your name as Rod Gers when it's Rogers or any other mistake that might happen up here today. Um, and by the way, those things could happen because a few of you never did return my calls about your name pronunciations. Um, but all of you will have your degrees. You've completed your time at Fordham, your coursework, your comps, your defenses, and your ships, both intern and extern. No matter what happens in the next few minutes, whether you remain in this spirit of levity under the pouring rain or revert back into seriousness with our student speakers upcoming sincere addresses and Dean Galen's earnest handshakes, whether you skip gleefully across the dais or march rever reverently, you have all made it to the finish line. In this most serious of years in our larger world and indeed in our Fordham community, you have made it and we are so proud. Thank you so much. So, I am pleased to introduce the first of our two student speakers. E. Alice Grissom.
Rutgers University. Thank you. All right. Oh, losing the mortar board already. Hello all, I'm Alice Grissom, one moment, an MA in Medieval Studies here on the Rose Hill campus, and I'm very excited to be graduating with you all today. Congratulations to the graduating class of GSAS 2023. Woo! Graduation is not just pomp and circumstance, but a prompt of reflection as well as celebration, to think about the path ahead and the path that brought us here, and those who guided us along the way. First, I would like to thank Dean Smith for giving me this opportunity to speak, as well as Dr. Nick Paul, the director of the Center for Medieval Studies for nominating me for this honor. I would also like to thank Dean Galen for her vigorous interest in and support of graduate students in our research this year, as well as everyone else in the Dean's office and the administrative staff who make GSAS run on a day-to-day -day basis. Since I have this podium, I'd also like to seize the opportunity to thank the faculty of Fordham, tenured and contingent, for the tremendous work they do educating us and the undergraduate student body. And most of all, I would like to thank everyone in the audience, partners, parents, friends, families, children, for showing up today amidst this glorious spring rain and for supporting us every day, rain or shine, through the strenuous demands of grad school and being the reason we do what we do. To round out this long list of appreciation, I'd like to thank Fordham Center of Medieval Studies, which has been my on-campus home for these past two years. You've probably been wondering since my introduction, if you can hear me over the rain, what is medieval studies? Time to address that burning question. It's an interdisciplinary field that strives to understand the shape of the medieval past, the people who lived then, approximately 500 to 1500, through methodologies as uh, like literary studies, history, art history, archeology, span musicology, and more. It may not surprise you to hear that a Jesuit university with all this neo-Gothic architecture and Gilded Age medievalism is an excellent place to study the medieval and to interrogate the value of the past in the present. That's um, the wonder of an interdisciplinary program is that it allows you to try out a variety of approaches toward your object of study and grants you exposure to a breadth of, experience, of perspective. That's something I think that a master's program does particularly well too. Master's programs are short, sometimes under a year, ranging to two years on paper although we all know it can take longer than that. Um, and in that brevity, they provide accessibility and flexibility in research and career path. I've thought of my MA program as a kind of trial period. Do I like these methodologies? Do I like what I'm doing? Do I want to do this for the rest of my life? I'm sure a lot of questions that you all have had. I think many of us appreciate the, ref uh, the reflection that the brevity of a master's program encourages, whether we're in a humanities discipline headed into a PhD or in a professional school jump-starting a career. The beauty of the master's program is in this unique combination of opportunity and reflection. But there is much to grad school beyond that. For master's students, knowledge of the quickly approaching end date of our terminally bound program propels us to make the most of our time at Fordham and in New York City. Why many people may only think of the seminar room when they think of grad school, for many of us the true life of campus is outside the classroom, especially as most master's students don't teach, so we seek to get involved and contribute in different ways. Here at Fordham, we've applied for fellowships, grants, and funding to research and attend conferences. Through the Graduate Student Council, we've worked to distribute funds and enhance the role that graduate students have in shaping the university community. And I've gotten to meet so many amazing, talented graduate students from all departments through that. In my own program, I've collaborated with faculty, graduate students, undergraduates on digital humanities projects that make the Middle Ages more accessible and especially outside of academic institutions and to support a more public-facing field. Because Fordham is located in a major metropolitan hotbed of ideas, intellect, and inspiration, we've all made friends and colleagues from institutions outside of our own, university and otherwise, across the tri-state area. 
I'm sure you all have similar experiences of unexpected connections and exciting collaborations that will last far beyond commencement day. Time for the hat again, my apologies. Despite the shorter time we spend here, master's students form a distinctive and important part of the Fordham community. And I'd also like to give a quick shout out to one of the most important communities I've been a part of here at Fordham, the Fordham Graduate Students Workers Union, who fight every day, thank you, who fight every day to improve the working conditions for graduate student workers and through which we all find companionship and solidarity. FGSW strives to improve life for all grad students, masters and doctoral, present and future. We have come far this year, but there's still much more to do. And we all have much more to do in our careers and our lives. Here at the precipice of commencement, we can look behind at the journey to this point and then turn to look at the path ahead. Looking behind, we see that the transition to graduate school challenges as much as it excites. Like me, you may have been nervous about moving to New York, whether from another state or country, or you may have been glad to stay so close to home. Like me, you may have been nervous about starting this new intellectual journey, whether you're coming from a career or straight from undergrad. Yet despite our nerves and the challenges of that journey, we've done it. The transition out of graduate school will surely be no less challenging and exciting as we move in new directions, but I'd like to invite you to a space of reflection amidst the celebration. After the well-deserved cheers, take a moment to pause listen and reflect on your achievements and development, the way you have changed Fordham and the way Fordham has changed you. Thank you for your time in this wonderful outdoor season. And again, congratulations to us all. Thank you, Alice. Faria Fassi Ahmed has completed her PhD in the Cell and Molecular Biology program and is our second student speaker today. She came to Fordham from upstate New York as a master's degree student and joined the PhD program immediately after, where she worked on finding treatments for genetic diseases. Faria. Good afternoon, friends, family, faculty, staff, alumni, and the illustrious class of 2023. Here we are, for many of us, at the end of our educational journey and at the start of a new voyage. As grad students, this likely isn't the first commencement we've attended as students wearing caps and gowns, but for many of us, it will be our last. I know the words last, final, and have almost no meaning to us anymore. As PhD students, we work so hard for so long, often with no end on the horizon. Even earlier this semester, when we knew it was going to be the last semester, we had endless deadlines to meet and boxes to check that led us to what we're now told is the end. Even after shaking hands with our committee members following the successful defense, we weren't done just yet. We still needed to do some final things like apply for graduation and edit and submit the dissertation electronically. Oh, and then we need to take more edits and resubmit the dissertation. It might have felt like there was no end to the end. I guess there were actually many small moments of finality. Today, at this commencement, should give us the sense of finality we've been waiting for. We are officially done with our graduate programs. We have reached the end of our voyage as students and now commence a trip into our chosen fields as designated experts. For our PhDs, as new doctors, we have pushed the limits of knowledge further than ever before. We have contributed to the ocean of information in our own fields. A few months ago, I participated in the three-minute thesis competition, which is exactly how it sounds. Graduate students from all programs at Fordham came together to explain their research in three minutes to a non-specialist audience. I was honestly shocked at the wide variety and intensity of the projects. From medieval studies, to economics, to philosophy, to English, I learned so many new things in three minute intervals about subjects I had never even thought about on my molecular biology island. 
Despite the variety of our programs, successfully earning a PhD means we were challenged and we responded with creative solutions. It means we were repeatedly tested and we demonstrated resilience. It means we were tempted with distractions and we remained dedicated. We have certainly persevered and prevailed because there is no way to ride the waves except for going up and then coming right back down. We have proven without a reasonable doubt that we have the tenacity and the grit required to get us through the roughest waters. But let's be real, we didn't do this alone. Each one of us had a community on campus and off campus that helped us succeed, both by pushing us and by being patient with us. The sacrifices we had to make affected the people around us. Today, we celebrate our achievements and our individual communities. What we've accomplished is no small task, but as a molecular biologist, allow me to tell you that even the smallest particle can and does have significant effects. I mean, the COVID virus is enough evidence for that. In our graduate programs, what we've done is built ourselves a ship, a ship we'll use to navigate the big wide ocean out there. In life, in our careers, whether it's calm seas or rough waters, we'll always have our education, our ship to support us. Education will never leave us and we'll have this doctorate forever. Today, I wear this cap called a TAM proudly as if it's fluffed up with all my collected data. It even has a bookmark tassel because I too have contributed to humankind's wealth of knowledge. I have dipped my pen into the ink of the ocean and left my mark that will continue to circulate the world long after I'm gone. With all that we've accomplished so far, can you believe that we've only just begun? And maybe that's why it's so difficult to feel like something's ending, because our thirst for knowledge, our enthusiasm for our research has not ended. Just like the river meandering through the canyon, we carved our own unique path in our successful educational journey. And now that we've reached the end of that voyage, we realize that we've already packed and boarded the ship for the next adventure. Just as this rain signifies new beginnings, today we are no longer Fordham graduate students. We are Fordham alumni. Congratulations, graduates, and congratulations, doctors. Thank you so much, Faria. <clears throat> In the next part of our ceremony, we will present the diplomas to our graduates. As we present them, you're welcome to photograph your graduate from where you sit right now, and I don't think anybody wants to move much anyway. Um, so um, we, we do assure you, though, that our professional photographer will take pictures of each and every graduate and that those photos will be shared with your graduate once they're ready. Thank you so much for your cooperation and your understanding. Dean Galen, please. We will now recognize those students who have earned the degrees of Master of Arts and Master of Science. Although our university president, Dr. Tanya Tetlow, has already conferred these degrees, we would like to take a moment to recognize these graduates' achievements once more. Would all those who have earned the degrees of Master of Arts and Master of Science please stand? Join me in congratulating these students. Please be seated. We would first like to invite those loved ones who have graduated from Fordham University to present their graduates with their diploma. Diploma presenters, please step forward when your graduate's name is called and join Dean Galen in congratulating these students.
Claire R. Bloss. Diploma presented by Claire's sister, Allison Bloss, class of 2019, Fordham College at Rose Hill, and class of 2020, GSAS. Renata R. Pocantesta. Diploma presented by her father, Marco Pocantesta, class of 1988, Fordham College at Rose Hill. Camila S. Gomez, diploma presented by Camila's mother, Catherine Gomez, class of 2018, School of Professional and Continuing Studies, class of 2020, Gabelli School of Business. now recognize the master's degree candidates individually. Please come forward to be congratulated by Dean Galen as your name is announced. We ask that you hold your applause, please, until all the names of master's degree recipients have been called. Please continue to remain in your seats and keep the aisles clear. E. Alice Grissom. Yamini Kamawit. Viviana A. Villalba. Sarah Morgan. Maya E. Sargent. Jordan Noel Smith. Alana Bridget Murphy. Emmanuel Yukaligbe. Emily C. Hugler. Gargi Ranade. Tyler Elizabeth Bell. Nakia Hurtbay. Mariangi Pena. Paige Kathleen Corkins. <laughs> Isabel Angelina Acosta. <laughs> Nini Mamasashvili. <laughs> Zinedine Z. Hoke. <laughs> Lisa Sophia Witzel. Michelle L. Nista. Margaret Ann Ruane. Sheng Ting Wong. Katia Chilavert. Bolor Janhu. <laughs> Alexis Semino. <laughs> Rina Lokai. Thank you. 
Albert Ezizoff. Anthony S. D'Onofrio, Jr. Nicholas V. Leone. Kyle John Ryan. Alexis G. Weintraub. Dina Bacay. Joseph P. Lasky. Ana Paula Penunuri Gomez. Jada Henry. Camille Elizabeth de Carbonell. Lindsay Lee Koch. Does this have a... Oh, there it is. Saima Abedin. Alexandra C. Yelonik. Emily Kendall Lucchesi. Albert J. Bartosik. Stephen George Agriantonis. James P. O'Neill. Garrett Davies. Yagis Nazipli. Santos Subos Chandrabos. Hassan Jamil. Ryan Patrick Heffron. Nicole Ann Hubka. Tasia Ambers. Augustus Riviere. Frank A. Chung. Nicholas T. Y. Steven Limeta. <laughs> Catherine Terrazas, Petty Officer Third Class, United States Navy. <laughs> Ruth Diane Takandong. <laughs> Famida Akhtar. Fernando E. Martinez Lopez. Oh! Angie Espinosa. Oh! Lester A. Santana Carmona. Oh! Jose Andrea.
Antonio Mendez Martinez. Juan River Veloz Reyes. Taras Jerebetsky. Nisa Hariz. Javier Santolaya. Michael Mosquea. Cesar A. Vargas Perez. Carmen de Asís. Indira M. Jaques Torres. Desiree Martinez. Danae Ross. Shri Shravya Reddy Malavarapu. Jasmine Lee Morales. Jin Se Lee. Bo Yuen Zhu. Christina Trowbridge. Henry Osei Akoto, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy. Alexander John Plaza. Michael Delliano Suberbi, Petty Officer, Second Class, U.S. Navy. Chris Preet Carr. Tenzin Gangshar. Maria Isabel Hara. Andrei Santana Abreu. <laughs> Luis Romero. <laughs> Miguel Maldonado. Pola Olmos. <laughs> Melissa Elena Macias. <laughs> Mohsina Mahdia Fordos. <laughs> Swarnama Pandey. Lee Idrisi. <laughs> Stephanie Bachero. <laughs> Lauren.
Lalash Sagua. Kutso Tanya Sagua. Maria A. Suleiman. Yan Dora Orr. Jordan Tribu. David B. Woodside the third. Mihuwu Mafuna. John J. O'Connell, the fourth. Zaylin Dunn Anthony Nelson. Juliana Cavallero. Helen R. Connolly. Catherine Quinn Kelly. <laughs> Eric Loritz Larson. John McGuire. William James Sheehan. Carl J. Triscari. Elena Lopez Bellio. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Isaac Tercero. Isaac's diploma is presented by his sister who was staying dry, I think. <laughs> Class of 2004, Fordham College at Rose Hill. Jameson Ayers. Catherine E. West. Kaylin Lower. <laughs> Liam Gibbons. Atticus Williams. Jack Thomas McKernan. Reese Brosco. Ayirta Patuk. Claremont Barantuo. Nicole DeSanto. Ariana Ayla de Jesus Rodriguez. Tripit Cor Rijo. Isabella Manuel. Austin T. Sasco. Anisha Golup Mia.
Ashfaq Zaman. Yanjia Shing. Da Zhen Liu. Yi Kai Liu. Tian Yu Wang. Hanlin Wang. <laughs> Yining Mai. Chen Shu Yin. Christopher J. Schultz. John Kevin Fernandez. Nassim McLevy. Emmanuel Galvano. Ciara Serpa Dali. Spring Clark. Matias Ignacio Ayala. Sean Jordan Page. Katrina Angela D. Arenas. Angelina Celeste Zacharia. Lisa S. Duke. Julian Mendez. Samantha M. Santiago. Stephanie A. Peralta. Jada Heredia. Diana Maria Medina. Dennis Patrick Kogan. Jessica Heron. Francesca Small. Devika Chandnani. Marlene C. Eichholz. Hayed Shikired. Anupriyo Chakraborty. Jihoon Dennis Kang. Shauna Brianne Epley, Specialist U.S. Army. David Lovendesky. Mark Ivan Host. Isabella McGuire. Matthew Johnson.
Denea Dawkins. <laughs> Laura Simon. Emily Burke. Susu U. Scott E. Kleinman. Woo! Nathaniel Davis. Joelene Vasquez. Christina Lopez. <laughs> Anamil Ventura. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating all of these graduates. And one more. Andrew Collada. So everyone who wants to please be seated. We'll have a tiny musical interlude and then do our next portion. We now recognize students who have received the highest degree that GSAS confers, that of Doctor of Philosophy. The tradition of doctoral hooding is a special moment to recognize those who have earned the degree of PhD. Each student's faculty mentor will ceremoniously place the doctoral hood over the graduate's head, signifying success in completing the degree and welcoming the candidate into the community of scholars. For the doc Doctor of Philosophy degree, the hood's velvet border is dark blue, the color that is traditionally represented the discipline of philosophy. It is now used to represent the mastery of any discipline of learning and scholarship in which the PhD degree is awarded. The lining of the hood displays maroon, Fordham's own color. Dean Lehman will call the graduates' names. As your name is called, please come forward to receive your diploma and be hooded. To our guests, please hold your applause until all names have been called. Faria Fassi Ahmed. Identification of potential therapeutics for the treatment of beta thalassemia, mentored by Barish Rubin. Mardoqueo Arteaga, Essays on Empirical Macroeconomics and Expectations, mentored by Arunima A. Sinha. Yeah, Mark! 
Yeah, I think we should applaud at this point. <laughs> For everybody. <laughs> Wonderful. Donna May Odra, measuring disaster resilience at the aggregate and regional level, mentored by Johanna L. Francis. Glauco Schettini, The Invention of Catholicism, A Global Intellectual History of the Catholic Counter-Revolution, 1780 to 1849, mentored by Silvana Patriarca and Magda Teter. Garrett McDonald, Prison Psychology in Soviet Russia. Mentor. To be hooded by Dr. Nick Paul. <laughs> Elizabeth Carolyn Cargyle, The Shape of History. Formal Variety and the Production of the Past in 12th Century History Writing in England and Normandy, circa 1120 to 1154, mentored by Thomas O'Donnell. <laughs> Madison Bennett Forbes. To the general reader, how 16th century paratexts evolved the reader, mentored by Heather Dubrow. Annalise Wolf, Hospitality's Rhetoric of Salvation in Early Modern England, mentored by Heather Dubrow. <laughs> Alexandra M. Finn Atkins, the the extracurricular renaissance, hunting, dancing, and bowling in early modern English literature, mentored by Heather Dubrow and Corey McElhaney. <laughs> Ella Toke, Nature That Matters, The Potential of New Materialism for Environmental Ethics. Mentored by Christina Geschwandner. Yeah. Elise Sarah Bragard, Parental Messaging and Attitudes Towards Sex and Sexuality Among Ethnically Diverse Adolescent Girls. Mentored by Celia Fisher. Margaret Mary Stapleton Smith, Queer Virtue Ethics, Mary Daly's Challenge to Catholic Sexual Ethics, hooded by Christina Zenner. Christiana Zenner, excuse me. My A. Fami, 
assessing biodiversity in Madagascar with leech-derived iDNA, methodological advancements and ecological insights, mentored by Ivan Hekela. Maral Agvinian, Culture, Context, and Cognition, a meta-analytic study examining the role of U.S. acculturation in neuropsychological functioning, mentored by Monica Rivera Mint. Lauren Evans Garner, The Impact of Healthcare Worker Stigma During the COVID-19 Pandemic, mentored by Dean McKay. <laughs> hey June Kim, The Role of Positive Future Thinking in Suicidal Ideation, mentored by Peggy Andover. Laura Polachek, Prognostic Understanding, Anxiety, and Prognostic Acceptance in Advanced Cancer, a Mediation Analysis, mentored by Barry Rosenfeld. Yadid B. Lobo, Inequality and Global Asset Pricing, mentored by Eric W. Renjifo. <laughs> Yukaterina Miganofa, RNAZ Linked Cardiomyopathy in D. Melanogaster. Mentored by Edward Dabrowski. <laughs> Peter William Krauss. The card games ended after the towers fell. The post 9-11 transatlantic novel from postmodernism to the new sincerity, mentored by Leonard Casuto. <laughs> Kyle Campbell. Natural History and the Early American Gothic, mentored by Julie C. Kim. <laughs> Jessica Antoinette D'Onofrio, Fictions of Literacy, in 19th century American literature, mentored by Glenn Handler. <laughs> Dylan S. Bailey, Delivering Understanding, the Goal of Philosophical Midwifery in Socrates, Kierkegaard, and Nietzsche, mentored by John Davenport. Justine Françoise Marie Hervé. Essays on industry specialization, job mobility and wages, mentored by Johanna Francis. Woo! 
Nan Jung, Equity Ranking with Stochastic Dominance and Combinatorial Fusion. Mentored by Rishikesh Vinod. Yakomina Paulina Hebrondi, The Impact of Psychopathy and Therapeutic Alliance on Treatment Outcome in a Dutch Forensic Treatment Sample, mentored by Barry Rosenfeld. Vincent Patrick Corcoran, Beyond Burnout, Acquired Capability for Suicide and Suicidal Ideation in Mental Health Professionals, mentored by Peggy Andover. Jing Yi Gao, Essays on Health and Out-of-Pocket Expenditures, mentored by Sophie Mitra. Urshan Leung, Essays in Applied Microeconomics, mentored by Sophie Mitra. Nicholas M. Berry, Reimagining the Just City, Social Selves, Substantive Justice, and the Concept of Property, mentored by Judith Green. Yua Tang, comparing propensity score weighting schemes with CBPS and XG boost in causal effect estimation, mentored by Haining Chum. <laughs> Ying Han, Dominance Analysis with Model Uncertainty, mentored by David Badescu. Ye Feng, Longitudinal Measurement Invariance, mentored by Hai Ning Chen. <laughs> Ellis Amity Light. Fluxing Fellowship, Bodily Fluids and Forms of Community in Medieval Devotional Literature, mentored by Andrew Albin. <laughs> Robert Evan Byers, Reading and Teaching La Morte d'Arthur, in the light of post-critique, mentored by Thomas O'Donnell. Dr. Bob! <laughs> Nicholas J. Soy, 
The Paradox of Public Recognition, mentored by Michael Bauer. Nashat J. Yazdani. A person-centered approach to the study of psychological well-being in emerging adulthood. Mentored by Karen Sidlecki. David Lyman Smigan Rothkopf. Twisting Lines. Genealogy and Legitimacy in 15th Century English Literature. Mentored by Thomas O'Donnell and Mary Erler. <laughs> Angela Christine Summers. The Role of Physical Activity and Neurocognitive Function in Older Persons Living with HIV. Mentored by Monica Rivera Mint. Please join me in congratulating all the recipients of doctoral degrees today. So to the stalwart ones who remain, as Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, I am delighted to welcome you or to uh, greet you on the 178th commencement of Fordham University and the 102nd conferral of degrees in GSAS. Like Alice and Faria, I'd like to begin with a note of gratitude to two groups of people. First, to the faculty, the faculty marshals, student speakers, GSAS staff, and university staff without whose efforts none of today's activities would be possible. It is due to their generous giving of time and energy and their commitment to graduate education that we are here today to celebrate the achievements of our graduates. I'd like to call out for particular thanks our verger, Sarah, Sarah, Dr. Sarah Lehman, Associate Dean of GSAS, as well as Dr. Chelsea Smith, Assistant Dean for Student Professional Development. Dean Smith is the magician who managed all the details except the weather so we could assemble in this place at this time. And second, and equally important, a note of gratitude and appreciation to the family and friends who have come to celebrate with us and who are a fundamental reason why our students have been able to accomplish so much. It is because of your unstinting support, encouragement, love, and um, impermeability in the rain that today's graduates have reached this important milestone. We thank you and honor your presence here today. I hope those of you who remain will join me in recognizing the attention, dedication, and love of these two communities who have come together to make this moment possible. <laughs> to our degree recipients, today we celebrate your accomplishments as scholars, researchers, and teachers but also as leaders, collaborators, explorers, creators, and problem solvers. You have earned degrees through your dedication to the advancement of knowledge and the acquisition of wisdom, both in the service of the greater good. Your intelligence, determination, and resilience have enabled you to reach this moment. You leave Fordham with skills that enable you to pursue any number of careers, both in and outside the academy in the educational and nonprofit sectors, as well as in government, NGOs, business, and industry. We are extremely proud of what you have achieved in your time here, 
and look forward to hearing about your many accomplishments in the future. I'm sure they will be many. Before we end our diploma ceremony, I'd like to share with you a sonnet that captures some of what I hope you have learned here while at Fordham, both inside the classroom, laboratory, and library, as well as outside, in the community, in New York, and beyond. I hope you will take these reflections with you wherever you go and whatever you do. The title of the sonnet is When I Am Among the Trees, and it's by a poet named Mary Oliver, who died in 2019. And this is from her collection, Thirst, which was published in 2006. When I Am Among the Trees. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locusts, equally the beech and the oaks and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say that they save me and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me, the trees stir their, in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches. And they call again, it's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light, and to shine. In the poem, Oliver alludes to the initial difficulty of reflection and discernment, of being good and doing good. She describes it as being distant from the hope of myself. All of us have encountered these moments of difficulty, of not living up to all that we inspire to be or do. Both our speakers touched on the resolve needed to complete the arduous work that is graduate study, where it's easy to lose sight of the things that matter because of the press of the everyday. Deadlines, requirements, exams, a study that did not give you the results you had hoped, countless chapter revisions, a dirty kitchen, noisy roommates, etc. That said, Oliver also speaks about the importance of finding a space, which for the poet is when she is, quote, among the trees, end quote. This space, whether it be literal or figurative, allows her the luxury to slow down, not to hurry, and to think deeply about the things that matter. The imperative to take time to contemplate to discern is very much at the center of Ignatian spirituality. Graduate education is also about thinking deeply and precisely about the things that matter, about taking the time to delve fully into ideas and their contexts, to understand and create knowledge rather than to accumulate information. And graduate education at Fordham weds these two kinds of deep thinking and discernment. During your time at Fordham, I hope that each of you has carved out for yourself the time and space not to hurry, to reflect on what you are doing and why, and how you can put your tremendous skills and expertise to work to create a better, more just, and kinder future. Whether your degree is in economics or English, the biological sciences or data science, philosophy or psychology, history or health administration, we have an urgent need for a generation of deep thinkers and nimble doers who will, who will help us build a better world. We are counting on you. It's a big responsibility, but we, your Fordham community, believe you are up to the task. That is what your diploma signifies. I trust that your time at Fordham has enabled you to become closer to that hope of yourself. In the words of Mary Oliver, I am confident that you have, quote, come into this world to do this, to be filled with light and to shine. Congratulations to all the GSAS graduates of 2023. When the music begins, the degree recipients and the faculty will, will recess, followed, led by our verger, Sarah Lehman, and our student speakers. And after the recessional, please join us for a reception on the side of the church. Thank you all very much. <laughs>